Hi guys! Manang araw po sa inyong lahat. This is Sean from Keep It Up with Sean and welcome to the third video of this lecture series. If you missed the first two videos of this series, you can always browse it in my channel. So the last video, we talked about the effect of climate, living organisms, and relief on the soil formation. And for this video, we are going to talk about the effect of parent materials on time on soil formation. So, medyo mahaba yung uh, topic na to, guys. Parent materials. So, we will talk about what are the sources of the parent materials. So, mainly rocks. We are going to talk about the different kinds of rocks. Uh, the igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks. And we are also going to talk about other sources of parent materials and as well as time. If you have questions, send me a message and I will try my best to answer your inquiries. And if you are new to my channel, please click the subscribe button and it will help me a lot. So, I wish you all the best guys for your preparation and sana makatulong sa inyo yung video na to. To review, these are the contents of my videos that I made. So the lecture one and the lecture two A, you've already seen them on my first two videos. And this third video is all about the effect of parent materials and time on soil formation. So the next video that I'm going to make is about soil weathering. Now, when we talk about parent materials, this will tell us about what the soil and the nutrients ultimately come from. And we all know that the soil and the nutrients are mostly coming from rocks and minerals. So, ano nga ba yung mga rocks at saka minerals? Uh, there are three kinds of parent materials. So, we have uh, residual. These are parent materials that are formed in place. So, these are mostly bedrocks. And we also have transported parent materials, which are loose materials like sand, silt, and clay deposits where soils develop. And organic parent materials are materials deposited by accumulated organic materials such as peat soils and box. So later on, we are going to talk about these three types of parent materials. So first is the residual parent materials. Residual parent materials are parent materials that are developed in place. So ibig sabihin, dun lang talaga siya na-develop in its own place. And these are mostly coming from the rocks and the minerals associated with the rocks. So ano nga ba ang difference ng rocks at saka minerals? So rocks are aggregate of one or more minerals but do not have a crystal structure. While minerals are inorganic substances consisting of one or more elements with definite composition and atomic and crystal structure. So, sa madaling salita, yung rocks ay compose siya ng isa or maraming minerals. Samantalang yung minerals, they are inorganic substances na may mga isa or maraming elements na nakadikit doon sa rocks. Balikan na natin yung slide na to. It was, uh, this slide is shown on the first video. And this is the composition of earth. So, the earth is composed of the core, mantle, and the crust. So, yung pinaka-heart, yung pinaka-ilalim, yung pinaka-gitna, yan yung tinatawag natin na core. And these are mostly made of molten metal or solid metal. Yun, masyadong mainit dyan sa gitna, guys. And then, after the core, we can find the mantle and we have the crust. So, yung crust, ito yung earth surface layer. Ito yung part of the earth where we walk. Ito yung lupa na tinatapakan natin. But then, under the lupa na tinatapakan natin, a lot of processes are on ongoing there. So, hindi natin alam kung ano ang meron dyan sa ilalim ng lupa na tinatapakan natin. Even when we walk, when we reach the bed, uh, the ocean floor, di ba pag naliligo tayo sa dagat, meron tayong buhangin na tinatapakan yung tinatry nating maabot pag uh, lumalangoy tayo, di ba? Or 
yung tinatayuan natin pag naliligo tayo sa dagat. Even so even yung lupa na tinatapakan natin every time na lumalangoy tayo sa dagat or pag lumalakad tayo sa river, those are just part of the crust, the earth surface layer. So under that, meron pa siyang mga rocks made of. And that earth's crust, which is the earth's surface layer, yun yung loose are just 1% of the earth's volume. So ang liit lang niya. So temperature of the crust increases as you go deeper into the earth. So pag nagmimina tayo, tingnan niyo yung mga uh, taon na nagmimina, the more na lumalalim yung hukay natin, the more na umiinit yung temperature. Uulitin ko lang, the earth is composed of the core. Ito yung pinaka-center which is mostly composed of iron, nickel, and some trace minerals. And we also have the mantle. And we have the crust. Yung crust is very, very thin. It's about uh, breakable, which runs around 5 to 70 kilometers deep. So medyo manipis siya. Yan yung pinaka-manipis na part ng earth. And then it depends upon kung saan tayo nakatayo. So, for example, if you are in the bottom of the ocean floor or nasa taas ka ng bundok. And then, below that crust, so then under that lupa, makikita natin dyan yung mantle. The mantle is consists of rocks, which is partially molten because of the heat coming from the, from the core. And that crust is broken into enormous pieces called tectonic plates. So, scientists believe that the crust of the Earth is made up of six large tectonic plates and a few smaller ones. And these tectonic plates float on the partially molten mantle. Kaya lang, there are times na nagkakaroon ng nagbabump sila against each other, which causes earthquakes, and volcanic activity. Kadalasan, ang tingin natin sa rock is very, very solid. But then, the rock inside the earth can melt to form molten rock called magma. So, dahil sa sobrang init sa ilalim ng loob ng earth, sa sobrang init niya, yung mga rocks doon ay unti-unting natutunaw hanggang ah, uh, Natutunaw siya, and then we call them magma. And because this magma is lighter than the rocks around it, umaakyat siya pataas. And then when the magma eventually reaches the surface, we get an eruption. So yun, uulitin ko ha. So in the mantle, we can find the molten uh, rock, which is called the magma. And since molten siya, meaning uh, in liquid state, nagmumove siya. So, unti-unti siyang nagmumove. Kaya, the earth under us, yung soil na tinatapakan natin, it moves constantly. Yun nga lang, hindi natin siya nafe-feel kasi very, very slow yung kanyang movement. And in that mantle, you can find the tectonic plates floating. So, before, sinabi, sabi nila, uh, the earth is composed of one, buo siya, but because of the tectonic plates na unti-unting gumagalaw and the continents are being formed. There are around six uh, major tectonic plates and meron ding mga maliliit na mga tectonic plates. So, unti-unti silang gumagalaw, they are bumping each other, and then, at one time, nagkakaroon sila ng, nagbabump sila, and then they create a boundary. And when these tectonic plates uh, bump against each other, nagkokolide siya in a very, very slow rate. Kaya kung minsan, nafe-feel natin yung earthquake kasi nagbabump siya against each other, but then it takes a lot of long, long, long time, periods of time. And because when they bump against each other or they collide against each other or with each other, they will now form different uh, formation of the landscape. So, kaya form yung iba may mga mountain ranges or different 
different formation. Because of those tectonic plates that are slowly, slowly bumping and moving, at one time they will meet and create and some of the molten magmas from the mantle is going to rise and reaches the earth's surface or the crust. So those rocks coming from the mantle are going to go outside the crust and this will be now the source of the bedrock which is now the origin of the soil. As I've mentioned, rocks contains one or more minerals, while minerals are inorganic substances consisting of one or more elements. And these rocks and minerals are found in the Earth's crust. Rocks are abundant on the surface of the Earth, but minerals are not commonly found any anywhere, although some of the minerals are extracted from the rocks. And some rocks may contain organic remains, like plants, fossils of plants and animals, but the, not the minerals. So minerals do, doesn't contain any fossils of plants. And rocks and minerals have both commercial values. Can you imagine? Me personally, I am very fond of minerals. So I have some collection of this, although hindi siya yung mamahalin. Yung mga common lang na mga minerals. And... Rocks contain minerals which are usually wide, used widely in manufacturing industry and both of them serve as raw materials in the industrial process of products that we use. So for example, in the Philippines, there are some provinces that are very, very rich in minerals, mineral resources. Like for example, in Compostela Valley province, uh, the province is well known for its... Uh, gold. Kaya ang dami-daming mga tao na involved in mining and uh, like in in Mako, like in Buringot, like ibang mga tao doon, they are staying in the tunnel, they are staying in the uh, mina, minahan for few weeks. Yung iba hindi lumalabas sa, sa ilalim ng uh, minahan hanggang hindi sa nakakapaghukay ng, ng gold. I, I personally did not see any, um, kasi sabi nila, di ba, may mga bars ng golds. Hindi pa ako nakakita ng ganyan, guys. So, I don't know how it looks like. But then, most of those golds are found in the deep part of the Earth's crust. And even diamonds. Diamonds are um, one of the most expensive minerals uh, we can find. And even these aggregates, like for example, yung sand and gravel, it may look uh, ordinary to us, but then these are very, very uh, expensive uh, materials nowadays because we need, we need them to build our houses, to build our buildings, to build our, our roads. So without these uh, rocks, without the sand and gravel, it's so difficult to build buildings. In Pilipinas, and dami dami yung mayaman dahil uh, they have their have their property located to rivers, rivers where they can uh, do some quarry for sand and gravel. And biro you guys ang malaki ng kanilang profit uh, if they owned uh, river beds with lots of sand and gravel. And aggregates. So these are some examples of the minerals and some of these minerals are attached to the rocks and depending on the component of these minerals, these minerals are now sources of um, nutrients if they will be available for the plants and to the soil. Some of these minerals are expensive or less expensive depending upon the, the quality of the minerals. And uh, a lot of people are using these minerals, their stones and minerals, because they think and they believe that some of these minerals are giving them 
extra energy on the right side these are all um, quartz amethyst so we have their different kinds of amethyst the violet and we have their the calcites and everything mostly they are uh, well appreciated because of their aesthetic value now we go to the different kinds classes of rocks so we have uh, three classes of rocks the igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rocks igneous rocks are formed from molten magma or lava which are coming from the volcanoes and we also have sedimentary rocks when weathering products from old rocks are compacted or cemented and the metamorphic rocks are formed by the metamorphism or change in form of other rocks due to heat or pressure. So these are the uh, examples of igneous rocks. So as I've told you, igneous are coming from molten magma or lava, which is very common. An example of that are the granite. And it contains a lot of quartz, potassium, feldspar, and biotite for their mineral composition. We also have diorite, which are also composed of quartz, plagioclase, and amphiboles. We have rhyolite, quartz, potassium feldspar, and biotite. Gabbro, these are dark rocks, which is mostly composed of pyroxene, olivine, and plagioclase. We have andesite, basalt, obsidian, and volcanic tuff. So if you can see, the rocks are composed of minerals. So, naka-attach siya dun sa rocks. So, these are some um, examples of igneous rocks from YouTube. So, we have their light-colored rocks. We have um, intermediate and we have the darker-colored rocks. So, we have their um, phanaritic, which are coarse grain. Diba kung makikita mo... May mga rocks na very, very fine. Meron namang mga rocks na coarse yung kanyang texture when you, when you feel them. And we also have the aphanitic which is fine grain. And we have the porphyritic which is consists of fine and coarse mix. So felsic is about light colored. And then we have the intermediate and the citic. And we have the mafic or the basaltic. So da darker na yung kanyang color. So, from granite, we have diorite, and then we have gabbro. Almost same lang kanyang uh, formation, but then nagkakaiba yung kanyang color because nagkakaiba din ang kanyang uh, sources of uh, kanyang mga mineral content. So, we have, for example, rhyolite uh, is fine grain. Then we have andesite, which is a little bit darker than the rhyolite. And then we have the basalt, which is very, very dark. So it's still fine. And we also have there the granite, the andesite, and we have the basalt, which is porphyritic, which is a combination of fine and coarse mix. So these are samples of igneous rocks. So we have there the granite, and then we have there the diorite. And we have them different kinds of rhyolite, depending on the mineral composition. So as I've told you, igneous rocks are formed from molten magma or lava. So molten magma, uh, magma is a molten mass comprising most abundant elements in earth. It contains a lot of silicon, aluminum, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, hydrogen, and oxide. Where the silicon oxide is the most abundant among all. So, kaya, puputok yan at paglalabas yan into the, the Earth's crust, it will now carry those rocks um, which is very rich in different, different kinds of elements. So, there are two major, um, by the way, the temperature of magma is very, very high. Masyadong mainit dyan, guys, sa, sa ilalim. So, it's around 1,040 to 1,200 degrees. Can you imagine? Kaya natutunaw yung ibang ibang mga rocks because of it's too much heat. So yun, so na nagiging liquid yung nagiging liquid yung rocks. And then because it is lighter than the solid rock around it, the magma rises and collect in magma chambers 
and some of the magma pushes through vents and fissures to the Earth's surface, and it will be erupted and it will now be called lava. And then, siyempre, paglalabas yan sa volcano, siyempre, nag, nag, uh, from 100, 1040 to 1200 degrees Celsius, pag nakalabas na yan to the Earth's surface, medyo malamig na siya sa labas, so it will start now to solidify and it will form hard rock. So there are two major factors influencing the creation of igneous rocks. The original rock that was melted and the cooling history of the molten rocks. Kasi depende din siya kung kailan at paano siya napalamig at paano siya nag-solidify. So magma cold, cooled inside the crust of the earth can result to rocks with larger minerals. So coarse grained, referred as platonic or intrusive rocks. Molten rock that flows out to the surface is called lava, and these rocks are called volcanic or extrusive rocks. So extrusive igneous rocks have small minerals, so they are fine grain, because they cooled quickly. So the minerals did not have enough time to form larger minerals, and rocks can be whitish to very dark gray depending on what mineral form during cooling. Kaya nag-iiba-iba din ang kanyang uh, sources of rocks. So, each volcano produces a variety of rocks. Iba-ibang rocks ang kanyang nailalabas. And it can differ uh, because of the difference in pressure. So, merong mga volcano na nag-explode violently. Meron namang kalma lang siya. Kalma lang ang kanyang pag explode and these eruptions produce secondary type of volcanic rock called pyroclastic rock. And it may contain crystals if the molten rock had begun to crystallize before it exploded. So meron nang nakadikit doon ng mga crystals. And pyro pyroclastic rocks may also contain pieces of pre-existing rock. And we also have another kind of volcanic rock which is caused by a lahar. So lahar is an Indonesian term that describes a lot or cold mixture of water, old rock fragments, and new pyroclastic material which can flow down the slopes of a volcano or river valleys. Uh, nung pumutok yung Mount Pinatubo, there's a lot of lahar flow coming from Mount Pinatubo washing to the uh, provinces surrounding the Pinatubo area like Pampanga, uh, tarlac and there and a lot of the fields a lot of the farm fields are being destroyed by lahar so hindi na nakapag tanim yung ibang mga farmers because uh, their soils are become uh, not anymore productive so hindi tumutubo yung ibang tanim na they used to grow there so, as I've told you, the igneous rocks are coming from volcanoes. Lavas that are rich in minerals like quartz and feldspars are usually light in color, which are usually associated with volcanism on land. But then, syempre, meron ding ibang mga volcanoes na pumuputok under the sea, uh, sa ocean floor, galing yung kanyang pagputok. Like, for example, diba, when we go to Kamigin, there is a volcano there that erupted uh, in the, the cemetery. There, you can find there the underground cemetery under the, under the water, under the sea. And even the, uh, even the islands of Hawaii are formed uh, from volcanoes under the sea. Nung nag-erupt siya, and then from, from the sea, and then when it goes out, uh, splashing a lot of uh, uh, lavas, it becomes solidified in the magmas and it creates now a new island composing the different islands of Hawaii. So, all volcanic rocks will cool much quicker than platonic rocks and this is reflected in the size of the minerals. Kaya nagkakaiba-iba yung mga uh, mineral composition niya kasi some of the volcanic rocks, iba-iba din ang kanyang cooling, um, cooling mechanism. Plutonic rocks can form in large or small magma chambers inside the crust and the upper mantle of the earth. 
So these chambers never reach the surface unless they have cooled and the surface rocks are eroded away. The term Ploton refers, refers to large and small chambers, and a batholith is the largest chamber, while a lacolith is a smaller pluton. So magma cuts into what is called the country rock, and it can intrude either in the same direction as seal or across the beds, which is called dikes. So, so sabi ko nga na yung um, the mantle, the upper mantle of the earth is consist of uh, molten magma. But then since molten siya, some of it through time, hindi siya, hindi siya uh, mabilis na nangyari, through time to ilang years or million of years, some of those magma are going to rise, rise. And then at one point, if there is a movement of earthquake or anything that is moving, some of those molten magma will flow out from the volcano and some of the lava is going to flow outside. And those lava flowing outside will cool down, forming uh, different rocks, different bedrocks, depending upon dun sa uh, bilis na kanya pagkukul down. And minsan, yung mga molten rock inside the chambers may be chemically different. And then, it will also create different types of minerals as the rocks cool. So, for example, yung molten rock rich in silica, aluminum, potassium, and calcium will make rocks that are light-colored minerals, like granite. And gabbro is a rock from magma rich in iron and magnesium with green to black minerals. Kaya nagkakaiba yung kanyang color. Plutonic rocks are composed of large minerals because they cool down slowly within the crust and upper mantle of the earth. And this will give the minerals time to grow larger. And kaya medyo malalaki yung kanyang grano at saka yung kanyang texture. In geology, we have this Bowen reaction series wherein Dr. Bowen discovered the order of mineral crystallization. So in this uh, series, uh, this is based on observations and experiments of natural rocks wherein uh, the specific minerals form at specific temperatures as a magma cools. So when you look at the picture, we have there the high temperature and in this case, these are the first uh, minerals to crystallize as it goes down to low temperature, which is last to crystallize. So we have there, pag masyadong mainit, uh, the first one to crystallize is olivine, olivine, pyroxene. And pag medyo lumalamig, lumalamig, we can find there the one that is last to crystallize are the quartz, muscovite, mica, and the potassium feldspar. Dahil sa study ni Dr. Bowen, uh, na-prove niya na, na kaya nagkakaiba-iba ang, ang formation, ang composition ng mga minerals ng bawat rocks kasi magkaiba din ang kanilang uh, temperature of cooling down. So may mga uh, minerals na nawala na, na, hindi na siya available nung nag-cool down yung rocks. So the Bowen series is only uh, applicable to igneous rocks. Then we also have now the sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks are formed when weathering products from old rocks are compacted or cemented. So example of this are sandstone, siltstone, shale, conglomerate, limestone, and shirt. And they have now different kinds of mineral composition. So quartz, sand, silt, clay minerals, or it can be calcite or dolomite or quartz. So, how does sedimentary rocks are formed? So, the physical breaking of rocks creates sediments or particles. So, like for example, yung sa waterfalls, di ba? Kung makikita mo yung bedrock, uh, because of the rushing of water, it breaks the rock into small pieces, carrying them into the river and deposited somewhere when the water slows down. Same for strong wind. Like in glacier, they also... Um, uh, grind the rocks into small pieces and some of these materials are being deposited somewhere. 
And cold and warm weather also break the rocks. And most especially water dissolves some of the minerals in the rock. And these minerals and elements can connect again and form other particles and sediments. Sedimentary rocks have one thing in common. They all have something to do with water. And this water causes the erosion of these rocks. And those eroded can be due to the streams, rivers, oceans, coral reefs, beaches, deserts, and glaciers. And some of these materials that are eroded, those particles, are deposited and compacted and become cemented. So this is the figure uh, showing how sedimentary rocks are formed. So first, so we have the land. So there, uh, the erosion and transportation happens. So eroded sediments end up in the water and begin, begin to settle down. Siyempre, yung mga natatanggal na mga pieces it is being carried down by water. And then at one time, it will become uh, settled in one place. And then, Deposition, that's the second uh, process. With time, syempre, it does not happen uh, overnight. Through time or maybe million of years, more sediments are added to newly formed sedimentary layers. And syempre, nag-accumulate siya. Nag-accumulate yung mga deposition doon. And since pa parami ng parami yung mga added materials doon, there will come to a point na nagiging compact yung sediments. So the release of moisture from the sedimentary layers makes the layers compact. So tumigas na siya. And then salt crystals glue the layers to form more compact sedimentary rocks. So it becomes cemented and it's become now very, very hard and become solid. So yung mga materials na didissolve, na, di na erode, nag-accumulate, and then nagiging compacted, and then it becomes cemented. And these are how sedimentary rocks are formed. So these are some examples of sedimentary rocks. Like sandstone, which is very common in beach or in desert environments, while mudstone and siltstone are common in quiet, deep marine environments. That's why, um, I don't know I don't know if you have tried that one, di ba? Pag minsan, um... Pag naliligo tayo sa dagat, we tend to collect some stones. Yung ibang stones, may mga dark color, may mga lighter in color, may iba na mga, may mga nakaform na um, layers, or, tiba Ang ganda niyang tingnan, kasi iba-iba yung kanyang color. And, that's why I'm very fascinated with, with rocks, because, it's how nature works. Siguro tumatanda lang ako, kaya, mas na-appreciate ko na yung mga, ganyan. Ngayon. And uh, these are some of the predom predominantly coarse-grained uh, sedimentary rocks like conglomerate. We have rounded glass, breccia. We also have sandstone and we have shale and we have mudstone. So, kita nyo, uh, some of the materials are being added, some are being compacted, and some are being cemented. So, this picture was taken in Austria, in Tirol. And I was really amazed because uh, it's a river. And you can really find there different kinds of boulders, rocks, and rocks. So, yun. So, I can just sit there for, for a few hours, no? Admiring the nature and how, how nature works. So, syempre, yung mga bato na nandyan, malalaki siya. But then, because of the constant flow of water... Some of these rocks are being uh, uh, degraded, eroded, and it will be uh, cut into uh, smaller pieces. And then, hanggang saan nagiging fine siya, and then later on it will become a soil. Sedimentary rock gives the geologists or paleontologists an idea on how the environment has changed over time and this is a very important way of understanding what happened in the past even if the deposition occurred million years million of years ago and in other countries they are uh, using sedimentary rocks to create statues tombs and homes 
and they even have their um, carved their homes into the sides of mountains. And some artists are also using um, sandstones to create statues for all to marvel after civilization. So example of this are photos from Petra Jordan and also from Longman Cave in China, in which they carve um, some stage statues and some walls from, from the different uh, sedimentary rocks in the area. Then we also have the metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are formed by the metamorphism or change in form of other rocks by heat or pressure. So these are already, it can be already um, igneous or sedimentary rocks, but because those igneous and sedimentary rocks are exposed to heat or pressure, they become undergo into metamorphosis and it will become now a new kind of rock. So for example, granite, sha before, like an igneous rock, but because they are exposed to heat or pressure, it will become nice later as metamorphic rocks. So basalt will turn schist, sandstone will turn quartzite, limestone will turn marble, shale will turn slate, and conglomer conglomerate will turn metaconglomerate. Metamorphic rocks are best identified when looking at the rock in nature. Pag... Uh, Bumbisita ka sa area at meron kang rock formation na nakikita. Tingnan mo yung area and uh, you will notice how, how those rocks are being formed. You look at the deformation and the features that are characteristic of an area. And maybe they were once igneous, sedimentary, or another metamorphic rock. But because of but are physically deformed and chemically changed due to different temperatures, and pressures na kanyang na experience. So like when you when you look at this picture, this is a sedimentary rock. But then under pressure, siguro na push siya by a strong pressure, it will now create a layering or it will now create a, a new metamorphic rocks. The elements and the minerals can actually move to form new minerals. The rock does not melt. Otherwise, it's an igneous rock, and a rock looks different after it undergoes metamorphosis. So it will have now a different texture and a different appearance. So for example, in this uh, picture, so we have here mud clay. There's a mud clay, and because uh, there's an increasing pressure and temperature, the mud lithifies into shale. So, naging shale siya from mud clay. Naging shale siya because of uh, pressure, difference in pressure and temperature. And then, later on, it will be metamorphosed into, from shale, into morphosed into slate. What happened here in the metamorphic rock? So, here, mud and clay settle quietly on the ocean floor. So, because... Of the additional weight, it squeezes the water from the mud and clay on the bottom and cemented together by chemical reaction and become shale. So from the mud clay, uh, dahil sa kanyang additional weight and chemical reaction, from mud clay naging shale na siya. And if that shale is put under moderate pressure and low temperature, due to burial or of plate movement, that shale will become slate. If that shale, there's no enough heat and temperature were applied to that slate, it will turn into phyllite, which is not as hard as slate. And if that shale is exposed to higher temperature and moderate temperature, it might transform into schist, and the clay in the shale could be transformed as mica, a schist but with shiny look. So you see, one rock, but then because of its exposure to different uh, temperature and different pressure, it will now transform into another kind of rock. And that is why it's called metamorphic rock, because it undergo metamorphosis. So in this picture, which do you think is metamorphic rock? So the... Left side is granite, 
and the right side is the nice. So granite is a light-colored rock made of quartz, feldspars, mica, and small amounts of hard blend. And these are granite is an example of igneous rock, so formed from volcano, volcanic. But then they all have the same uh, mineral composition, but the pressure of metamorphism causes the minerals to line up giving nice a distinct banded appearance. So they all have the same mineral composition, but because of the pressure, yung mga minerals na nandun will, ha will have now a line, and it will give now a different kind of appearance, and this, was na this will now be turned into nice. So from granite, naging nice na siya due to metamorphism. So here, so we have here the shale with increasing heat and pressure it will become slate it can be schist or it can be nice so schist may be also be converted into nice if increased pressure and temperature is added so ibig sabihin metamorphic rocks have undergone a lot of stress it's like us diba Kung minsan uh, tayo, uh, yung mga misis, for example, or singles, na hiniwala yan ng jowa or iniwan ng jowa uh, because of a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, yung iba doon is either nadedepress, pumapangit. Pero, meron din namang iba na gumanda at mas lalong sa mexi nung iniwanan ng jowa. Like, for example, Moira. ba Mas lalo siyang it depends upon how we how we react. Some some people are uh, those pressures and those stress will turn them into more beautiful, more strong. While those stress and pressures can also cause to other people to become uh, negative or depressive. So iba iba yung kanyang reaction. And same also for for rocks it's the same so some of the rocks can become can turn into different kind of rocks depending upon the pressures that are being encountered by those rocks so these are the important sedimentary and metamorphic rocks and the minerals that are commonly dominant in them so like for example limestone yung apog ina apply natin for uh, lime as limestone uh, those are uh, loose diba but then uh, when they are put in pressure under pressure or stress they can turn into marble and it has a lot of calcium carbonate calcite and the dolomite can also become marble same with calcite it can also have uh, a lot of uh, calcium carbonate or magnesium carbonate sandstone can turn into quartzite which has a lot of quartz silicon oxides shale can become slate which has a lot of clays conglomerate can turn into nice or can turn into schist so those are the residual parent materials so residual parent materials are parent materials that are bedrocks that are formed in place so hindi siya dun lang talaga siya na form and then now we are going to discuss about transported parent materials. Uh, these are loose materials like sand, silt, and clay deposits where soils develop. So loose materials like sand, silt, and clay deposits uh, where soils develop like colluvium, alluvium, floodplain, glacial, marine sediments, loose, and organic box. So when we say alluvium, or alluvial, these are parent materials transported by rivers or streams. So like for example, in Kapalong area, uh, in Santo Tomas, in Davao del Norte, most of the uh, parent materials are alluvial because they are transported mostly by rivers or streams. So when there's uh, great floods, uh, the water from the river are carrying some of the sediments and being deposited into the deltas and we also have the aeolian these are sand transported by wind from the sand dunes or silt 
transported by wind through loose or loose. And we also have collovium. These are transported by gravity, falling, falling uh, of rocks due to gravity. And we also have the lacustrine, which are paired materials that are transported by lakes. So lakes, lacustrine. And then we also have glacial drift or glacier. All materials that are transported by ice or as a result of glacial activity. And then we also have the beaches in the marine, di ba? Uh, of course, uh, like in Davao del Norte, we have, or in Samal particularly, we have uh, a lot of fine beaches. Or in Davao Oriental, we have fine beaches. Or in Boracay, for example. And those beaches are materials transported by oceans and seas. So, syempre, pag every time na umaalon, yung waves, nagdadala siya ng mga sediments, carrying those uh, sediments and are deposited in the beach line. So these are the alluvium. alluvium. Uh, so, we have here the Tagum Libugan River, which is the main uh, medium for bringing those soils, uh, transported those soils and deposited somewhere. So, they are fine-grained and mostly fertile soils deposited by water flowing over flood, flood plains or deltas and river beds. They are formed by flooding and most areas in Davao del Norte are mostly of alluvium material. So they are very, very fertile soils because uh, those top soils are carried and are deposited somewhere in these deltas or river beds. Then we also have the aeolian. Uh, uh, composed of sand or silt size particles. Siyempre, pag mahangin, um, pag mahangin, di ba, uh, some of those uh, particles are even, are being carried and are deposited somewhere. Siyempre, pag malakas yung hangin. Like, for example, uh, I don't know if you noticed, di ba, minsan, uh, yung mga areas na hindi pa masyadong na um, concrete yung mga roads, for example, di ba, uh, before nung way, when I was working before in Lapanday, the road from Mandog to Davao City was not yet uh, concrete. Hindi pa siya ganun. So, as in guys, grabe, sobrang kailangan mo talagang magsuot ng, ng scarf. Kasi when you reach downtown, which, which is only 15 minutes from Mandog or 20 minutes, punong-puno ka na ng alikabok. And uh, libre na yung pulbos mo at saka... Yung buhok mo talagang, kailangan mo talagang pagpagan dahil sa sobrang dami ng alikabok. Tawag namin dyan is abog. Uh, yeah. So, yun. So, every time the the, the jeep, di ba, pag umaandar yung jeep, uh, it is also carrying, uh, producing a lot of wind, a lot of uh, wind. And some of the materials are being carried and being transported. And then we also have the colovium, which is transported transported by gravity materials, which accumulates at the foot of a steep slope mountain and contain particles from clays through rocks, pebbles, and boulders. Yan. So, dahil sa, sa gravity, syempre, um, free-flowing siya. Talagang nahuhulog yung ibang mga particles from high, high places. And then we also have the lacustrine. So these are transported by lakes and are sedimentary in nature and are formed at the bottom of lakes by incoming water from rivers or streams. And once the lakes dry up and receive no water, there will become now a new soil formation. So those are lacustrines. And then we also have the glacial drift or glacier. This is a sedimentary material that has been transported by glaciers or ice including clay, silt, sand, gravels, and boulders. And then these are the beaches or the marine, transported by oceans and seas. So those are the parent materials that are uh, transported, transported parent materials. Then we also have, we're going now to discuss about organic parent materials. And these are materials deposited by accumulated organic materials such as peat soils and bogs. So organic bogs or peat soils, uh, 
in Cebuano, in I mean in Davao, we call them uh, huyung huyung, huyung huyung, uh, huyung huyung because uh, when you step on it and you move, you move, you will really feel the movement of the soil. It's huyung huyung. It, it's moving. And this is a type of soil made from decomposed organic materials like sphagnum moss that form over a thousand of years. So, on jan siya, for ilang years na siya na And it's accumulated, it's accumulated uh, organic materials until they become soils. So, to maximize its potential, drainage is necessary because most of them are uh, filled with water. They are very rich in carbon and may contain methane and other greenhouse gases. And one problem of it or is that uh, because they are rich in organic materials, their pH is very, very low and they are mostly acidic. So those are the different kinds of parent materials that we discussed. So we have, uh, we have the, discussed about the residual parent materials. We have the transported parent materials and we have the organic parent materials. Now we go to the fifth factor, which is the time. Time, because uh, vegetation and climate act on the parent material and topography over time. And this is the fifth and the last factor of chlorp affecting the soil formation. So the age of a soil is determined by its development and not the actual number of years it has been developing. It doesn't matter whether it's 5 million years ago or 1 million or 5,000 years ago or 10,000 years ago, but it matters about uh, determined by its development. How long it takes for a soil to become old depends on the intensity of the soil forming factors or the intensity of the other four soil forming factors. And all soil forming processes ov occur over a very long period of time. Masyadong matagal. It's not only 1,000 years. It can take millions or maybe, I don't know, the exact number of years. And the time it takes to develop a soil is relative depending upon the climate, vegetation, and human interaction. So this is an example of... Uh, uh, the soil, the development of the soil. So here you can see uh, in the x-axis, so we have here the fresh and weather rack, it's 100 years, 1,000 years, 10,000 years, and 100,000 years. So in 100 years, you can find here, we only have the O horizon. Yeah. And then maybe around 500 years later, uh, vegetation is going to grow, some of the vegetation are going to dry, uh, die and accumulate. And then you can have now the A horizon. And then you have the C horizon and you have the R. And then after maybe 1,000 years or 10,000 years from O, you can now have an A horizon, an E horizon, and BW horizon and C. And as you as the time goes by, you can now have different kinds. More, more horizons are being formed in that specific soil. So there will be now more accumulation of clays and other oxides, and there will be a development of different structure of the soil. It did not happen overnight, guys. So Believe me, it takes a lot of time, but sometimes in just a few hours or a few years, we destroyed some of those soils. So this is the age sequence. So here, youth, bata pa yung lupa. So you only have the A and the C horizon. Then you have the juvenile. We have the A and the BW horizon and the C. Mature is we have the A, E, the B, T, and C. Adult is when you have the A, E, BT, B2, BT2, and old age senile is when you can have a lot of sesky oxides. So, very old na yung lupa na yan. So, we already discussed about the factors affecting soil formation. So, we, I repeat, this is um, chlorp. So, we have climate, which is primarily um, 
due to precipitation and temperature. We have the living organisms. Uh, discuss, we discuss about the effect of vegetation, the microbes, and the soil animals, including man. And we have the relief. We talk about the slope, the aspect, and the landscape position. And we have about the parent material where we discuss different kinds of rocks. Uh, the transported materials, and we also discuss about the organic material. And also we have the time. And soils vary from place to place because the intensity of the factors is different at different locations. That's why nagkakaiba yung lupa na nakikita natin because the factors uh, in that specific area is different from the other area. So that's why. So thank you very much and see you in my next presentation. And uh, the next presentation, we will talk about soil weathering. So thank you for listening and I hope you learned something from this presentation, guys. See you again next time. Bye!